I have scrapped out Windows entirely out of my ThinkPad and I have installed this Cloud OS on this full blown laptop and I have kept this as my daily drive for the past week or so and this is the experience I have Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Why and what pushed me to scrap out Windows out of my laptop and install this as my daily driver? Well, first of all, I would say is uh, this is by far the best and the most efficient uh, form of user interface on a Linux. And by the way, it's Debian. Of course, there are uh, elementary OS, Zorin OS, and other Linux distros, and even any Linux distro for that matter can be customized. But this one resembles more like a Chrome OS from a Chromebook out of the box. Really looked forward to try a Chromebook, but that didn't make much sense for me to shell out money and buy a brand new hardware when I already have my Windows laptop. Flexibility of installing the Chrome OS directly onto a Windows laptop, either virtually or directly onto this of what I've done right now. So I have tried this one and being Linux of course it's safe and secure. And the other important and the interesting part which I wanted to try is its uh, ecosystem factor. If you buy a Chromebook and you, if you have an Android, nowadays Chromebooks come with Play Store uh, integration support. If you sign in with your same account, you get a seamless uh, data transmission and an integration between both these devices. For instance, you can access your drive from your uh, phone and from your Chromebook, uh, your Google Photos, your documents, your sheets, everywhere. But here's a catch. Neverware has not provided Google Play Store support for this. But other than that, just other than that, you have all your Google applications as much as what you have on your Android phone. So yeah, since I have a same account, I wanted to try that experience and it's been pretty good. The basic uh, support uses like checking your documents, editing your documents, um, syncing your photos and the, just the basic stuff. And I did try achieving in this one. It's been a stable experience, as a matter of fact. Also enables us to do uh, light to medium tasking, like good support for coding. I did try coding on this. I've installed uh, VS Code by enabling the Linux kernel. The experience is like okay, okay-ish because of the File Explorer. As I told, the interface is good, but it's not the best. It still needs to evolve. File Explorer. Uh, it looks pretty clean and neat, just like what we saw on uh, Microsoft's Windows 10X uh, recently. But file navigation, changing the directory, copying file path, never been easy for me. If you buy a Chromebook and if you have an Android phone, you can do an integration, a wireless integration. You can pair up both these devices and you can have even more better connection. But again, I don't find that here. Maybe I have to enable the developer mode or the debugging feature. I haven't tried that but anyways the option is available in the setting and maybe try it later. But talking of the installation process, even that's been quite simple by the way. Uh, just go to the Neverware website, you find three editions, the home, education and the enterprise. Uh, just keep aside the education and the enterprise as they are paid versions, just go for the home version. And in the home version you get two options, either you can create a bootable USB creator, USB maker, what they call it. And you can also download the disk image file which comes like around a, uh, a lot of gigs in size. Okay. Now if you are having uh, Windows, basically you download the USB maker and yeah, just slot in your USB, 8GB or 16GB preferably and they might have uh, prompted that not to use SanDisk USB, nothing like that. I tried it through SanDisk, there's no problem. And just slot in your pen drive, it automatically will detect your pen drive and just create the bootable USB. That's it, you're good to go. And leave the USB, restart your system and the process is just quite simple. You will be directed to the, the Cloud Ready page and go to the right down bottom corner and you can select the installation of OS. But I have experienced a serious problem with it. Uh, during the time of installation, I couldn't call it as a problem, but rather it's a major con. That's how I can call it. I'll come then later. Seems like the perfect alternative for a Chromebook, right? Uh, no, the negatives and the limitations of the Chromebook also follows with this one. The first and the most inherent negative is you can't install big applications. I mean, real big professional applications. Audio editing, video editing, gaming. Just forget about these things because you know Chromebooks are essentially underpowered and are low powered devices and the same goes with the OS here, the cloud ready. Although you might be having great uh, graphic cards or great CPUs but still 
installing a cloud ready os on those power devices it's just like locking their potential the software should support that so it's pretty much the same good old chrome os and that's the limitation the chromium browser here we get the same chrome extensions Chrome extensions and the app extensions are totally different from full-blown applications. Anyways, Chrome has to emulate uh, from the bottom. I'll be using Chrome and Chromium interchangeably, so never mind with that. That's a very big limitation you need to keep in mind. As I told earlier, this is properly and perfectly meant for some real basic stuff. Check your mails, edit your documents, and for some entertainment. That's it. And that's my use case for now current. Also, one reason which pushed me to install completely on this and have a taste of it okay second major con that i faced with this during the time of installation i had an hindrance with the installation is as i started in the pen drive i was being left with a single option of to erase my hard drive and then install cloud ready that felt totally weird because generally if you're installing any os for that matter mac windows or any form of linux uh, the developers give their customers, give their users a choice to play and to explore with the hard disk partitions if they are really in need of it. I was left with only one option to just erase my drive and install Cloud Ready on it. But rather I have drives, I don't have a single drive. I have also upgraded my ThinkPad uh, to an SSD by the way, so it has both the drives. I felt like I could have chosen the SSD but I wasn't given that option either. Or I thought it would automatically detect the SSD during the time of installation but after booting it up, I checked it and I was shown that the OS is being installed on the conventional hard drive like I have spent 3000 rupees for the SSD for its speed to have a better computing experience but I was again being left with the conventional drive now that SSD is just sitting empty it's just like a paperweight inside so that is a major con. I think Neverware, please, uh, you have to work on this a little bit. You should provide your users some choices with regard to partition because uh, partitioning and with regard to the disk utilities, you have to provide it for all your users during the time of installation of OS. That's very crucial. Okay, the third limitation that I faced here is I have installed VS Code on this, but the installation process was quite uh, time taking. I, I was being forced to sit for like half an hour, half an hour installation for a VS Code. Although I understand it's being installed on a hard drive, not on an SSD, but I don't think VS Code is such a big software. You can do to, uh, light to medium levels of coding, but you just can't do some super levels on this B sharp dotnet paper in my semester. I need a Visual Studio for that. It can't be installed on this or on any Linux for that matter. The good thing is. Uh, Google has provided support for Android Studio but I don't understand how sensible is that idea because Chromebooks in general are not super spec devices. They are generally low powered and the OS itself is also uh, less resource intensive and Android Studio just chunks power like anything. I don't know what's the science behind providing a support for such a very big software on such a small tiny device or on a tiny OS for that matter. Maybe Google is uh, promoting Chrome OS in that manner that you can sit and develop. So overall, uh, I just did it on an experimental basis. Again, even if you are trying to do that, I would rather suggest you to do it on a spare laptop. This is my main daily driver device. I was not supposed to do on this because I am still having uh, my semester. I am supposed to do my projects. For instance, I have my Ethereum project, I have my blockchain stuff happening here. I don't know how am I going to do on this. It does support coding. Let's see, I am wishing good luck for myself. So yeah, that's the basic uh, point where it's boiling down. The use case matters a lot. If you are uh, using it for just the basic purpose as I mentioned earlier. Or if you are having any old device. And that's what it's basically being developed for. Any old device, any unsupported. Uh, device which can't support the latest version of Windows or it's quite slow. This is a good option. This is a very feasible option and uh, its simplicity, its efficiency just stuns everyone because on low power devices, on such a slow device which uh, was not working properly, if you happen to install this, it will make the device more useful. Now that's the only uh, good thing which I can say about this initiative. So yeah, it's almost been a week and 
I'm okay with it. I don't know how far will I be sticking with this. Let's see. And yeah, that's it for now. This is Sai. I'm signing off. Take care.